want me to translate it for you? And hold that. Will you hold that? Yeah, of course. Warm up. Yeah. People can see my speech soon. Dames en heren, heel welkom voor de vermoedelijke Britse anti-islamactivist en vrijheidsstrijder Tommy Robinson. this week that spoke a lot of lies about me, that also said that I promote hate. I'd like to write this down, or get, make sure you get in your report. If you think we can endure what we do because we do it through hate, what we do, we do through love. Love of our country, love of our culture, and love of freedom. Our love for freedom will always outweigh any oppressive fascist regime, whether that be Islam, communism, or whatever else. I'd like to talk a lot about freedom today. The country I live in now, the country I accept I live in, is a very different country to the one I thought I lived in when I first started my activism. We live in a post-free speech era. The sooner the public understand that, the better. I started my activism 10 years ago. I formed an organisation. I began to speak about Islam. Within the first six months of my activism, the police had raided my properties, my, my mother's home, they had arrested my pregnant wife, on three separate occasions, we were targeted. Charges were dropped. What this was about was the beginning of intimidation, the beginning of attempts to silence dissident voices. As I've understand, understood by speaking to Driss earlier, he's experiencing the same. These are not tactics just used against me. These are against everyone that's speaking up across Europe. Now, mine started with the police. When I was first arrested on fabricated charges that were dropped, my bail conditions, these are conditions given by the police that someone whilst on release from the police has to abide by. My bail conditions were not to contact the EDL. That was the organisation I was leading. My bail date to return to the police station was for the same date that I was due to speak in a, in, in, in a city in the north of England. The police that come to my home, 30 police officers, 15 at each house, armed with machine guns. The police that come were from South Yorkshire Police Force. Now this was back in 2009. Many of you may have heard of the sexual rape gang epidemic in Britain, especially the town of Rotherham. Rotherham is controlled by South Yorkshire Police. So, back in 2009, it wasn't public. No one knew. There was no evidence of the mass, mass rape of a generation of our daughters at the hands of Islamic gangs. No one knew. So the police, because I was supposed to be talking about these exact issues in their area, they come to my home, they arrested me, and they gave me conditions that would have prevented me from going to that city to talk about that issue. This become a common theme during my activism. I'd done a charity walk. We have a, an area of London called Tower Hamlets. Tower Hamlets, we have a mayor of London, but Tower Hamlets, a borough with the largest Muslim population, got their own mayor. He was an extremist. He's since been removed. He got in charge of a billion pound taxpayer budget. As soon as he got in charge, he began siphoning money away from moderate organisations and giving it to extremist groups. 
the, the population of Tower Hamlets have made it very clear that I wasn't to be allowed into that borough. With an imam making a public statement in the newspaper warning the police what would happen if I went to that borough. I then was taking part in a charity walk that would go from A to B. The police come to see me the day before. It was approximately 30 miles. It was for a children's cancer charity. The police come to ask me the night before to tell me not to enter the borough of Tower Hamlets. I told them to get from A to B, I'll go in a straight line. I'm not going to take any diversion. They said, but you will end up walking through the Muslim community. I said, I live in Luton Town. For those of you who don't know Luton Town, Luton Town is a town 30 miles north of London with a population of 35 to 40% are Muslims. I walk through Muslim communities every day. Now, when I got on my charity walk, which is what it was, a gentleman, you can watch this video on YouTube, someone come up and assaulted me. Once I was assaulted, the police then arrested me. And, it was clear, and this is when I realised that they don't care if the whole world is watching. They don't care if it's evident what they're doing is wrong. They will do anything to appease because of the fear they have from certain sections of communities. Now I was then again, I was arrested, I was put on bail, and my bail conditions for nine months were not to enter the borough of Tower Hamlets. Exactly what the Muslim Imam had asked for. Now these conditions, as well, I want to talk about conditions because we're talking about freedom. And one of the freedoms is freedom, freedom of movement, not just freedom of speech, freedom of movement. I was then, in Britain we have the Home Office and there's a Department of the Home Office. Police raided my home again, this was in 2016. I was taken to court where they wanted to give me a banning order. The reason they wanted to give me the banning order was not because of anything I had done. They said that my presence could provoke a reaction. My presence could provoke a reaction. Officer after officer from the government stood on Oathing Court and they begged and pleaded that I would be given this five year ban. This five year ban would ban me from walking into my own town centre. It would ban me from my train station. It would ban me, and it was literally a map, and you couldn't make it up, drawn around the entire Muslim community. Now at this, my local police force was summoned to, they, they use football legislation for this ban. Now my local police force was summoned to the court. When they come to the court, they were asked under oath as police officers, do we need to ban him? And they said, no. Is he a danger? Him? No. Are you worried about him breaking laws? No. This was the government, the Home Office, trying to take away my freedom of movement because they fear not what I'll do, but what other groups may do. I won this back. It cost me £10,000. This didn't stop. This has continued. Some of you may have seen, I had a court case yesterday. I was out with my children. I was in the city of Cambridge. It's a beautiful city actually. Very low Muslim population, lovely city. And the police approached me, 10 officers. I was having food. They approached me and told me that I had to leave the city. If I didn't, you can watch this video. This, and and the, the crazy thing is, this video, has been viewed by millions of people. They have seen the wrong that the police did. They told me I had to leave the city. I was then marched from the pub with my children, whilst multiple police officers videoed us, harassed us, clearly harassed us, clearly an abuse of police power. When it went to court this week, again, Luton police officers, my hometown, who were there, were asked to come and stand on oath. On oath they said, Tommy Robinson is no risk. We, know, we knew he would do nothing wrong. 
But Cambridge Ibris, the risk that my presence, something might happen. Nothing has happened. I'm out with my children, but if I'm left there, something might happen. So I have to be ejected from the city. Now, yesterday was a dark day, I believe, in my country. It was a day where freedom of movement, the right to family life, was taken from us. The judge sided with the police and said that it was reasonable and necessary for the police to remove me from an entire city with my children, even though it was proven that I had done nothing wrong. So people understand. I was not there on a political rally. I was not there to cause any trouble. I wasn't there in a large gang. I was there with two friends and five young children. We'd been to the fair. We'd been to the park. We were having candy floss. So this is where our society has moved. Our freedom has taken us. Now, where the government interference, where did most of I'll say this is all politically motivated. Some of you may have seen I've been removed from all social media. In 2017, I looked at my reach on Twitter and on Facebook. And in a four week period, my tweets were read by 173 million people. My videos were watched by 59 million people. I knew when I saw those statistics that I wouldn't have long left on social media. What we've then seen, and the reasons for this, Twitter removed me. They removed me for hate. I stated a fact. The tweet that I was removed for, I said, 90% of grooming gang convictions. So you understand what grooming gang is. It's the mass rape of young children by gangs of men. In, the, in Britain they call it grooming. It should be called rape jihad. But I stated a fact. That <laughs> I stated the fact that 90% of the convictions on these cases are Muslim men. 30% of those men convicted are called Muhammad. It's a fact. So what we then understand is that social media companies treat facts as hate speech. I was removed from Twitter. Now how does that affect me? That affects me because just like this week when journalists in this country report lies and tell people I'm a Muslim hater, when they report these sort of things, I can't actually counteract them. I'm gone. This week, or in the, in the last coming weeks, after that, become PayPal. PayPal removed me. No reason given. In the last two weeks, my book has been removed from Amazon. My book was called Muhammad's Quran, Why Muslims Kill for Islam. It was simply put in the Quran in chronological order, as in the order that it was, the historical order that it happened, not in a, a muddled up order like most Qurans are. That was sold for two years, now it's been removed from Amazon. You can go on Amazon, you can buy Mein Kampf, you can buy Hitler's book, but you can't, he has it there, you can't buy a book that is critical in any way of Islam. At the same time, Facebook and Instagram removed me. They removed me, my reach on Facebook, I have 1.2 million followers. This isn't about just silencing me. This is about stopping every one of you having the opportunity to hear an alternative viewpoint. It's about giving back the monopoly to the mainstream media. When Donald Trump was elected, and when they saw the revolution of social media, they realized they had to take it back. And what we've seen is, co is coalition between social media and government. For example, many government figures in my country, even in the last couple of weeks, the second leader of the opposition party wrote a, a letter to YouTube demanding that my videos and my platform is taken away, giving no reason why. So that People understand that the media, I believe there's some from America here understand. Britain has very strong laws against inciting hatred, against inciting religious or racial hatred. I have never been arrested or convicted under any of those laws. I stand here now 
as someone who is nearly, completely unpersoned. I stand here with no social media, on, no platform on Facebook, no platform on PayPal, soon to be probably deleted off YouTube, and I have not committed one single crime. What comes after that? That's what every one of, every one of you have to think. What is next? Because if they can do this to me, they can do it to Philip, they can do it to Trees. I can be a test case. And the reason we stand up every day, or we keep standing up, is because so many people come reliant. Because in general, people are in fear. People are scared to speak freely, which is why I say free speech, it's only free if it doesn't have consequences. How many of you truthfully feel, I don't know the situation here, but in Britain, that you can speak openly and honestly about your politics, about what you think, about what scares you and what fears you? And more than anything, as we see these attacks, and we see this attack on freedom, many of you would have seen, I was imprisoned last year for holding an iPhone and speaking calmly and stating facts and giving publicly held information. I was taken off the streets and locked away in what can only be described as a kangaroo court. In fact, what has been proven as an unlawful and flawed trial. When that happened, and a special thank you here to Philip, a special thank you to your political party for raising the profile, for traveling to my country, do you know that when that happened, we have 650 MPs in my country. Not one of them spoke up. In fact, in fact, the media, who are supposed to be journalists themselves, who are supposed to care about free speech, who are supposed to care about these exact issues that we love, that we are fighting for, the media bent over and pushed against each other for who could write the biggest damn in peace for why I deserved to be in prison. I committed no crime, I was kidnapped off the streets and I was locked in solitary confinement with complete abuses against every one of my human rights for, for highlighting the issue of sexual exploitation of our daughters at the hands of Muslim migrants. Even now, since exposing, I've done a documentary, I know, I I've done a documentary that was recently aired which proved categorically that the BBC, supposed to be unbiased, were working with far left NGOs, Hope Not Hate, who are a far left extremist organisation. They were working together to, on a planned documentary to take me down. I proved with undercover footage that the, the main man from Panorama would clip my footage, edit my footage, and create fake news. Within 24 hours, I was removed from social media, and the next week, I'd been recharged for the same offence that I was imprisoned for last year. I don't want to stand here and act like I'm asking for sympathy for my personal self. This isn't about me, it's not about Tommy Robinson. It's about the fact that if they can do this to me, they can do it to you. And to the journalists and the left-wing organisations who celebrate every moment of this fascism that happens against us. It's us today and it's you tomorrow. If you really care about freedom, if you really care about free speech, even when people have difference of opinions that you despise and you hate, you must protect it. And the reason being, everyone saw the atrocity, the terror attack that happened yesterday. When we take away a healthy centre for debate, for genuine debate and criticism about real fears, concerns and problems that are in our nation, when you take that away in the level that you are, the censorship that you're enforcing on the public, for no crimes, when you do that, you will create monsters. We do everything we can to stop that. We
I'll just end this on freedom is worth I'll end it on a message a message to the establishment a message to the jihadis a message to every one of you freedom is worth fighting for and freedom is worth dying for thank you Tommy Robinson and Dries van Arnhem over. 